So our today's topic is uh, functions. And in functions, we shall look at uh, calculus. And uh, in calculus, we shall look at what we call differentiation. Differentiation. And uh, in that, we shall also look at something we call integration. The integration. And uh, in that also, we shall look at the applications. The applications of all that. So I've already given you the handout. So I will quickly go through the handout. And then we narrow down to illustrations. And uh, today my voice is not very good. So I hope you are hearing me clear. Now, when you talk about a function, we are talking of a mathematical expression of a relationship that exists between variables. That's what we call a function. It is an expression, a mathematical expression of a relationship that is existing between variables. And in any relationship, as you have been saying, we have what we call the independent variable, which is represented by X. And we have what we call the dependent variable, which is represented by Y. And Y or these uh, letters, X and Y, you can use any other letter in the alphabet, as long as you know which one is representing your independent variable, and which one is representing your dependent variable. And we say that the independent variable is the one that makes the other one to change. And the dependent is the one that is made to change. Uh, the general format of writing this is y is equals to a plus bx. And uh, in this case, y is, rather a is the value of y that does not depend on x. I think we talked about that when we were in regression. Uh, a, B in the slope is the rate at which Y changes when X changes by one unit. Uh, the next thing is uh, the various types of functions that we have. We have very many types of functions, but for our case, we will just narrow down on very few. One is what we call the logarithmic functions. Now, the logarithmic functions are functions which have a logarithm as part of their uh, elements, like y is equals to 10 logarithm of x. Now, that one is the logarithmic function. So your syllabus does not require us to get into a lot of details about this. So we will just stop it at that point. Then we have what we call the exponential, the exponential uh, functions. The exponential function, they are written as y is equals to ae plus or minus bx. And uh, this is where the power is the independent variable, or the independent variable is part of the power. It's part of the potent. And uh, this one, they are used more in what we call exponential probability distribution. And in a topic we used to call queuing theory, but because that topic is not a part of your syllabus, we will not give a lot of attention to uh, that. The other one is what we call a univariate function. Now, univariate function is a function that has one independent variable. The function that has one independent variable and is normally written like this, y is equals to a plus bx. Then we have what we call multivariate. Now multivariate is uh, a function whereby we have more than one independent variables, like y is equals to a plus bx1 plus b2x2 plus b3x3. 
that way. That's called multivariate. We have more than one independent variables. Uh, the other one that we have, they are called polynomial functions. Polynomial functions. And a polynomial function is a function that has uh, the independent variable being raised to, uh, to a particular power. Like now, uh, if it is raised to power one, that is called first order polynomial. If it is raised to two, that's called second order. If it is raised to three, it's called that order. So these powers, we call them the, the, the degrees or the orders. And uh, a polynomial function is therefore labeled depending on uh, uh, the power, the highest power that we have. So we have the end uh, polynomial functions. So of this, the most common that we shall come across are the first order, which we call the linear functions. And then we have what we call the quadratic functions. Those are the ones that we shall concentrate on. Now, the linear, it is when we are just raised to power one. Quadratic is when we are raised to power two. And as you can see in the handout, I have given you some characteristics of a linear function. I've also given you some characteristics of a quadratic function and how to go about solving them. And we are going to do some questions on the same thing. The other thing that you need to know is called differentiation. Now, differentiation is uh, a technique in calculus that is used to determine what we call the rate of change. That is used to uh, determine what we call the rate of change. Now, as you can see in your notes, I have given you several rules. Uh, there is what we call the constant rule, the general rule. Uh, there is what we call the addition and subtraction. There is the product rule. There is a division rule. There is a logarithmic rule and the exponential rule. Now, your syllabus will require that we just concentrate on the part three. So we will concentrate on the constant rule, on the general rule, and on the addition and subtraction rule. The others are not very prominent in your syllabus. Uh, the other thing is something we call higher order differential. Now, higher order differential, it occurs when you differentiate a function more than once. When you differentiate a function more than once, we shall be doing that in a while. And uh, these higher order differentials, they are used to help us know whether we have a maximum point or a minimum point. Again, when we come to the applications, you see how the maximum and the minimum values uh, come in handy when we are dealing with the business variables such as profits, uh, costs, revenues, and so on. Uh, the other thing that you need to note is called integration. And integration is the reverse of uh, integration is the reverse of differentiation. And uh, you will see and maybe that when I leave it at that point, you will see how we reverse. Uh, but I need to mention that integration is divided into two areas. We have what we call definite integration and what we call indefinite integration. We shall again be able to illustrate uh, all those things. So that is the overview of the whole area. So what now I want you to write is uh, or the illustrations that we are going to use. So I want us to start. This is what now you are going to write linear functions, linear functions, or linear equation. Now, a linear equation, uh, we will start with the example. Example one. Example one. Now in example one, we are going to say this. Develop an equation. Develop an equation 
passing through point A, which is 10, 14, and B, which is 14, 22. We develop uh, an equation that is passing through point A that way. Now, the solution to this, the solution to this begins by freeing the format. So, uh, in the solution to this, you begin with the format. The format of uh, a linear function is always y is equal to a plus bx, because we have said that the highest power is one. Now, the other character of a linear function is that it is predefined when you are given coordinates of any two points. So these coordinates, we substitute them. So we start with the point A. The value of Y is 14 is equals to A plus uh, 10B. This is because of point A. And then we come to this one. 22 is equals to A plus, uh, this is 14, 14 B. That is because of point B. So what you do after that, you now say subtract, you subtract. So 14 minus 22 is negative eight. A minus A is zero. 10 minus 14 is minus 4B. And therefore, if I get minus eight, I divide by minus four, I will be left with B as two is equal to B. So the value of B is two. So I now proceed here and I say 14, is equals to A plus 10 times two, 10 times two. So this becomes 14 
is equal to a plus 20. So 14 minus 20 is equal to a. And this is minus 6, which is a. So, uh, excuse me, Malimo. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask, how do you know uh, what to use as the independent and dependent variable between the numbers, the points that you give? I expected that to be known that always this is the value of x and this is always the value of y. Okay, so it's an assumption. We just it's assume not, that. It's not an assumption. Back in primary or secondary. We have to confirm, it's okay. <laughs> That's why I did not bother to, to, to explain, but uh, now that you have asked, then you are reminded that this one is always X and this one is always Y. All right. So uh, if that is true, we then proceed and say, hence, my equation is Y is equals to minus six plus two X. So that is how you develop an equation when you are given two values, uh, coordinates of any two points. Uh, let's do example two. Example two. Example two is again, develop an equation. Passing through points A, which is minus two and six, and B, which is four and uh, twenty-four. You are given uh, those values there. They told you to develop uh, an equation. How do you go about it? How do you go about it? Now, the solution the solution is. Uh, you begin with the format y is equals to a plus bx. That is the format. Uh, then you substitute. So when you start with the values of a, y is six. So this is a plus the value of x is two negative. So minus two b. This is because of point a. Then this one, we have 24 being equal to A plus uh, 4B, 4B, um, because of point B there. Now, again, you subtract here. And when you subtract, you are able to tell us uh, 6 minus 24 is negative 18. A minus A becomes 0. Minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6B. Then you proceed and tell us negative 18 divided by negative 6 is B. And this gives us the value of B as 3. When we get it that way, we then come here and say six is equal to a, which you do not know, plus minus two times three, plus minus two times three. So this becomes a six is equal to a minus six. Putting the item together, I'm going to have six plus six is A. So 12 is A. 12 is A. And if I get 12 there, 
If I get 12, then I comfortably come here and say hence. Y should be equal to 12 plus 3x. 12 plus 3x. Uh, from there, I want to give you another example. Sample three, example three, uh, where we are told develop an equation passing through A, which is 20 and 34. <laughs> And as a gradient, as a gradient of negative five, as a gradient of negative five. So we have said eh, that a linear function is fully defined when you are given coordinates of any two points. Or when you are given coordinates of one point in the gradient. Now, this one is very, very simple, very, very simple, because all what you require is spell as y is equal to a plus bx. Then we know i is that four. A we do not know, but we know that b is minus five. And we know that x is 20. So this becomes that four is equals to a minus a hundred. And therefore that four plus a hundred is equals to a. So one that four is a. One that four is a. One that four is a. So hence, y is equal to 134 minus 5x. So that is how you can uh, handle linear function. So I want to give you an assignment. Yes, Jackery. B is the gradient. If you look at your notes, B is the gradient. It is also called the slope. And later on, we shall be calling it the 
differential. So because you people you are doing economics, I believe you should be able to handle this one. Uh, November 2016. November 2016. Question 4C. November 2016. Question 4C. Jacqueline, I hope you have gotten that. November 2016. Question 4C. Okay, yeah. so you shall try that. Uh, you shall try that. Let's now cross to the second type, which is called quadratic. Quadratic functions. Quadratic functions. Now these quadratic functions, these quadratic functions, I want us to use data that is in the questions, although we are not answering the question fully, because we can only answer the question fully after we have covered everything. But because there is data, instead of me getting it overhead, uh, let me use the one that is already there. Welcome, Jacqueline. So I want us to use this question of June 2013. June. 2013 and question number 1b. I'm not even going to read because I'm only interested in the values. So there is the value of x there and the value of r, which is our y. x is 10 and uh, this one is 16.50. Then we have 25. And that 375. Then we have 40 and 4200. 4200. So when you are given this one, when you are given data like that, the first thing is to tell us the format. Format, format is Y. Now we shall use R instead of Y. So we shall say R is equals to AX squared plus BX plus C. So again, if you check in your handout, you see that this is the format of a quadratic function. Although here you can put y. The other thing that you'll be able to see is that a quadratic function is fully defined when you are given coordinates of any three points. For the linear function, we were dealing with two points, but in the quadratic, we deal with uh, three. So we now substitute. So you take this one, it equals 1650 equals x squared. So this x is squared, 10 squared becomes 100a, rafu 10b plus c. That is equation number one. I have to you put that 375 equals 25. If you square 25, if you square 25, you will get 625. So 625A plus 25B plus C. And that one you call it equation number two. Uh, then you come here, you take 4,200 is equals to 40, you square 40. If you take 40 squared, it is 1,600A plus uh, 40B plus C. That is equation number three. 
So those are three simultaneous equations. So what we do, we are going to use elimination method and uh, we are going to eliminate these values. We start with the value that is easier to eliminate. The value that is easier to eliminate is the one whose coefficients are already similar. You see this one has one, one. So C is the easiest. So we will say removing C from equations one and two, removing C from equations one and two, you take this equation one, 1650, being equal to 100A plus 10B plus C. Then you take this one, that 375, being equal to 625A plus 25B plus C. So you subtract now. You subtract. So you take your calc, you say 1650, 1650 minus that 375 is equals to negative 1725. Then you say 100 minus 625. 100 minus 625 is negative 525. Then you say 10 minus 25 is negative 15B. This goes. Now this one, you call it equation number four. That one, you call it equation number four. When you call it number four, when you call it number four, you come here and say, removing C, removing C from equations two and three, removing C from equations two and three, uh, you take equation two, that 375, being equal to 625A plus 25B plus C. And then you take this for 200, being equal to 1600A plus 40B plus C. So once again, you subtract. Once again, you subtract. And you tell us that 375 minus 200 is negative 825. So 625 minus 1600 is negative 975A, and this is negative 15. This one you call it equation number five. Call it equation number five. Uh, when you call it equation number five, you now remove this B. You see now to me, two unknowns, A and B. Now, now that this 15, it is the same here. So we will say uh, removing, removing B from equations four and five. Removing B from equations four and five, we will have uh, this one negative 1725 being equal to negative 525A <coughs> minus 15B. Then negative 825 
being equal to 975A, which is negative, minus 15B, minus 15B. Uh, so this one, again, we subtract. Again, we subtract. So when we subtract, uh, you say, if you say in your car, okay, minus 17, 25, minus, minus eight twenty-five. 25, you get negative 900. Arafu pare kwa A, useme minus 525, minus minus 975 is 458. 458. So that one proceeds to become minus 900 when it's divided by 450 we will get A, and this becomes minus two is equals to A. Minus two is equals to A. So from there, what I will do next is proceed and say substituting substituting in equation five substituting in equation five equation five here minus eight twenty five is equals to minus nine seventy five a minus Oh, now I know A. Now A is negative 2. So times negative 2. Uh -huh. Then I say minus 15B. Minus 15B. So this becomes eh, minus 825. If you take your calc, you say 975 times 2 is 1950. So 1950 minus 15B. So negative 825 minus 1950 is negative 15B. Negative 15B. So this becomes negative 2775 is minus 15b. So if I proceed, I'll say uh, something like this is b. So if I divide by 15, I'm getting 185. 185 is my value for b. Then I will proceed and say substituting, substituting in equation uh, one. Substituting in equation one. Equation one which was 1650 being equal to 100 times minus two, 108. I have plus 10B, so plus 10 times 185 plus C, I C. So this is 1650 equals minus 200 plus 1850 plus C. So this proceeds on to become 1650 plus 200 minus 1850 is equals to C. 
And when I combine those values, I get that zero is equal to C. Zero is equal to C. And if zero is equal to C, I still proceed and say, hence R, which is my function, it is uh, the value of A, A to equal to the part, uh, negative two. So negative two X square plus B, B to the part 185, 185 X plus C, which is zero. So this one you can just narrow down to R is negative two X square plus one eight five X. That's how we develop a quadratic function. Again, Again, if you check your notes, eh? you will notice that uh, there are two ways of solving simultaneous equations. So we can come here, although we are not told to. So solving using quadratic formula, quadratic formula, which you know so, so well for many years. Quadratic formula, it is given as X is equal to minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC. And you get the square root of that bit, we call it the quadrant. Uh, you divide it by 2A. You divide by 2A. as the formula. So we now substitute and say X is minus B. Our B is 185, so it's minus 185. Plus or minus B squared, 185 squared minus four times A, which is minus two, times C, which is zero. You get the square root there. You divide it by 2a. So 2 times minus 2. So proceeding on, we are able to gather negative 185 plus or minus. Take your calculator, you say 185 square minus into brackets four times minus two times zero, close the brackets equals. Then the answer you get, get the square root of that. And uh, myself, I'm getting back 185 be divided by minus four. One is the five to be divided by negative four. Uh, again, if you looked at the characters of a quadratic function, you found that we have two possible routes, two solutions. And these two, two solutions can either be real or non-real. Real or non-real. For your case, we say it is real. If this 
whatever is under the square root is positive. But if you get the negative upper under the square root side, that is non real. And for your case, you just stop it there because your syllabus has not taught you some things we call SADs and uh, a theorem we call the mover theorem that we use to solve those kind of things. Uh, so for your case, in case half I equal negative, you just stop at that point. But this one is positive. So we are proceeding. So we will say that X is uh, minus one in the five plus one in the five, we divide by minus four, or minus one in the five minus one in the five, we divide by minus four. So this one becomes zero, or the ninety two point five. So those are the answers. It is either zero or ninety two point five. Sasa, if you had been told to solve using the graph. So solving using graphical method. Solving using graphical method. We are solving using the graph. What we do, we plot this equation, this one. And uh, for our case here, we shall not plot, but I just wish to elaborate to you how it would look like. This is why you access. Just draw like a small diagram. This is x-axis. X-axis. Then this curve will come and touch like this. So this is point zero. And this is point nine two point five. So when you solve using the graph and you have plotted uh, where it touches the x-axis, those are the answers when you brought. I hope you can remember those graphs you used to draw in trigonometry. Mm -hmm. The cosines, the targets, the uh, and so on. So that is all about that. We are okay, type yes. We are not okay, raise your concern. So that I proceed. Okay. We are okay, type yes. If you are not okay, you raise your concern. Yeah, I can see a few responses. So I take that we are okay. So let's take another one. Let's take another one. Let's take another question. We go through the same journey.
this is the question of May 2015. May 2015, question number 1C. As usual, I said I'm not answering the question. I'm only taking the figures. So no reading. So our X here and our MC, the marginal costs, MC. So we have 50 units against uh, a cost of 22. We have 100 units against a cost of 100. We have 200 units against a cost of 436. Against the cost of 436. Sasa, with that, to mesema, you come and tell us format is MC is equals to AX square plus BX plus C. I told you this one, which was why it keeps on changing depending on what you are dealing with. Uh, you can as well clean it as why, or I will do a investment nani. So with that in mind, or uh, in agreement, we start now substituting. To the query of answer, the same at 22 is equals to 8x squared. So 50 squared, according to my calculator, is 2,500e. Then plus 50x, or rather 50b, plus c. And this one, I will call it equation number one. Uh, to be good at what he, it is a hundred against a hundred. So a hundred square is ten thousand A plus a hundred B plus C. That is uh, Roman two. Then four that six is equals to. 200 square is uh, 40,000. So 40,000 A plus uh, 200 B plus C. That is equation number three. Equation number three. <laughs> So when I have that, Kasema now, you remove C because the easiest. So I will say removing C from equations one and two. Removing C from equations one and two. Uh, we have 22 being equal to 2,500 A plus 50 B plus C. Then 100 is equal to 10,000 A plus 100 B plus C. So you mind us here. Yeah? So when you say 22 minus 100, I get minus 78. Oh, I have 2,500 minus 10,000 is negative 7,500A. Minus 50B, and this one I call it equation number four. Equation number four. So from there, 
we have uh, what? To remove C, we have removing C from equations two and three. From equations two and three, uh, we have a hundred being equal to ten thousand A plus a hundred B plus C. For that six is equals to forty thousand A plus two hundred B plus C. Now, this one, if you say minus, you say minus, uh, you get minus 336 here equals equals minus 30,000 A minus 100 B. Minus 100 B, and this one we are going to call it equation number five. Equation number five. Sasa, we will proceed and say removing B from equations four and five from equations four and five. So we took where he it acquired negative 78 is equals to negative 7,500A minus 50B. Then negative 336 equals minus 30,000A Minus 100B. Now you can see that the coefficients here are not the same. We need to make them the same. There are many ways of making them the same, but I want to use the one that is, uh, I think, is straightforward. You simply multiply by the opposite coefficients. You multiply by the opposite. So half a year 100 need to be half a, and this 50 need to be half. A. You multiply by the opposite coefficients. When you do that, we get uh, 78 times uh, 100. This is negative 7,800. This is uh, negative 750,000 A, and this is negative 5,000 B. When you multiply by the opposite, then it could happen the same as 36 times 50 is negative 16,800. Uh, 30,000 times 50 is negative 1,500,000 minus 5,000 B. So in that case, we now seek to subtract we now seek to subtract. And in that, we get minus. Get minus there. So, that's our particular calculator. We say, me, minus 7,800, minus, minus 16,800. This is 9,000. And minus 750 minus minus 1500. This is 750,000. 
E. And when you divide, when you now come here and tell us 9,000 divide by 750,000, it will be equal to A. 9,000, you divide by 750,000, it will give us A. Sasa, if I say 9,000, divide by 750,000, it is 0 0.012, so my A, is 0 0.012, 0 0.012, ah, yeah. if I have A there, I proceed and say substituting in equation Five. If you substitute in equation five, Takuja Pauseme minus three that to six which is equals to minus thirty thousand, which is multiplied by zero point one two minus a hundred B. So this works out to be minus, uh, so I multiply by 30,000. I get negative 360. Minus 100B. Negative 360 minus 100B. So as I equal my yo, that's all that we to say me, negative 336 plus 360 z equals to minus 100b. So if you subtract 336, you get 24. So 24 z equals to minus 100b. So 24 divided by minus 100 is equals to B. This becomes minus 0 0.24. Minus 0 0.24. That's the value of B. That's the value of B. Then I will say substituting in equation uh, one. Substituting in equation one. Uh, equation one, in the root you could do it equal to 22 is equal to 2500 A. So A is 0 0.012 A plus 50 B. So 50 times minus 0 0.24 plus C. That was my equation one. So further progress gives me 22 B equal to 2500 multiplied by 0 0.012 is 30 minus uh, 50 times 0.24 is 12 as C. So I'll then say 22 minus 30 plus 12 is C. So if you say 22 minus 30 plus 12, you get 4 here is C. Or is C. C. 
So it's now my value of C is uh, four. That means I already have gotten my function for the quadratic. Uh, which I will come here and say hence, hence, uh, mc is equal to a, a was uh, 0 0.012x squared uh, minus 0.24x plus four. So that is the equation. From there we say, uh, solving using quadratic formula, So we using quadratic formula. Uh, X again is minus B plus or minus B squared minus four is C. You divide by two A. You divide by two A. So X is uh, minus B. So because B is already negative, it comes in as positive. So 0 0.24 plus or minus 0 0.24 square minus four times A, which is 0 0.012 times four, which is our C. Then sasa hiyo te tunataftiria square root. Tunataftiria square root. Then we divide by 2a. So 2 times 0 0.012. 0 0.012. Sasa. This becomes 0 0.24 plus or minus. So put your fingers in the calc, okay? We set 0.24 square minus, open the brackets, four times 0 0.012 times four. Close the brackets equals. Now I'm getting the square root of uh, negative 0 0.1344. That is what I'm, I've gotten. You divide by 0 0.024. Now, because this one has become negative, you cannot proceed. So for your case now, yeah, you either stop it or you tell us not possible. Actually, don't say not possible because it's not true. It's only that your syllabus has not taught you that. You just leave it. But uh, it's very difficult that your examiner will set a question that will not go beyond this point. If that is what he wants. But in the event you come across it, uh, now I'm saying, don't fake the answers. Don't make this one to be positive when it's negative. If you are to draw or to solve using the graph, if you are to solve using the graph, this is how it will look like. This is X axis. This is Y axis. And again, because you people are doing economics, I hope you appreciate the formats of some functions. This being a cost function, it should take a U shape. So it's going to be like this. You see, it's not touching X axis here. 
it is because this one has become negative. In mathematics, we call them asymptotic. It's not touching. It is what I had said is non real. It's non real. Hello, I, I, I'm in class. Eh, 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 eh. Come again. Uh -huh. Chupa kila kitu yuko hapo. Umeka ile chupa, chupa. Utampatia namba gani? Namba, 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 namba gani? Eh. Oh, sawa. Ako na namba yangu? Ah, uh, Kristi. We could hear you. Uh, so having said that, I want to give you an assignment here. Assignment. The question of April. 2022. Question uh, 1A, April 2022, question 1A. I would like you to develop two equations. You develop your equation, your revenue, the equation, your costs. The equation for revenue and the equation for costs. So that is about the quadratic functions. Now, as I said at the beginning, uh, cubic is not prominent in your syllabus. It only comes in during the application. And therefore, I'm not going to take time to, uh, to develop a cubic function. It's not adding value to us. So with that now, we proceed to the next agenda, which is called differentiation. Differentiation. So as I said at the beginning, as I said at the beginning, differentiation is determining the rate of change for nonlinear functions, functions that have turning points. And we always differentiate a function with respect to the independent variable. Now, for you to deal with the differentiation effectively, you need again to recall some things uh, which you are very, very much aware of. We call them the rules of indices, which says that any number is power one is that number. Any number is power one is that number. Any number is power zero is one. 
haya n number that is a reciprocal one out of a it is a raised power negative one if you have two numbers a raised power m multiplied by a raised power n it is that a m plus n And if you have two numbers like this, then it is A M minus M. M minus N. Those rules are very, very golden as far as uh, differentials are concerned. Uh, I said uh, we will just focus on the first three and I want to present them in a very general way using the examples. So in example one, if you are given a function that y is equal to x raised to power seven. The differential, when you differentiate a function, the answer is called differential or derivative. So the differential of that is dy dx. That's how we write the differential dy dx. Now there are two steps that we take. The first step, you take this power, you multiply the whole equation with it. So you take seven, the power, then multiply the original function. That That's the first step. The second step is you reduce the power by one you reduce the power by one. And when you do so, this gives you seven X raised power six. Seven X raised to power six. Very simple like that. Uh, example two. Example two, if they give you a function that y is equal to one out of x raised to power four, remember this is the same thing as x raised to power minus four. If we are given y is equal to one out of x raised to power four, it's the same thing as x to the power minus four. The differential of that, the differential of that is that dy dx, dy dx, I've said two steps. So we take this power, minus four. We use it to multiply this function, x raised to power minus four. Then step number two, you less the power by one. So when you do so, this becomes minus four, x raised to power minus five. You can leave it that way, or you can choose to return it the way it was, but we prefer being left that way. Example three. Example three, if you are given a function 
that y is equals to 16. y is equals to 16. This is the same thing as 16x, which is raised to power 0. Because we are saying the number raised to power 0 is 1. And we know that when you multiply any number by 1, it is that number. That number. Sasa. Uh, in getting the differential, in getting the differential, we are going to say by dx. You take this one, zero, sixteen x to the power zero. Then you less one, and the answer is zero. Now, a value in a function that does not have x is called a constant. This one is a constant. You see, it does not have x. And we have said the differential of a constant is always zero. Because something that is constant is something that is not changing. So if you are looking for the rate of change, if it goes without saying, it will be zero. So example four. Example four. Example four. If the function is y is equal to 10 x cubed minus 12 x raised to the power minus 2 plus 5 x plus 18. That is now what we call plus minus rule. You do the same thing that we have done. In getting the differential, you will say dy dx. dy dx. Sasa uchukue the original power 3. Na itumia kumultiply 10x3 ni less 1. Na multiply una less 1. Then send a minus. It is minus two. Una multiply twelve x minus two minus one. <coughs> then uh, this one. It is uh, five x raised to power one. So it is one five x raised to power one minus one. And this one, it is 18x raised to power 0. So it is 0, 18x raised to power 0, then you raise 1. Then you raise 1. And uh, this becomes 30x raised to power 2. This becomes plus. 24x raised to power minus 3. This becomes uh, 5x raised to power 0. And this becomes 0 there. You can leave it that way, or you can simplify and say 30x squared. Or rather, you can. Uh, 24x raised to the minus 3 plus 5. So that is how we go about differential. 
the differential. I want us to solve one more. I hope you have gotten that. There is what we call higher order differentials. Higher order differentials. Higher order differentials. The H to this. The higher order differentials. So in this one, you just get the function here. For example, y is equals to x raised power four plus x raised power three plus x squared plus x plus 10. If you have been given that kind of a function, now, the first order differential, first order differential. Now, first order differential is what you get when you differentiate a function for the first time. So, dy dx. I believe you have followed the examples that we have done. And if you are followed, then I can afford now to go straight here. You will say me I will multiply four there, then x, then I raise one, I get three. Uh, here I multiply by three, I raise one, I get two. Here I multiply by two, I raise one, I get one. And here I multiply by one and get one. And this one becomes zero. <laughs> if we are told to get second order differential, second order differential. Now the carbon delta square y over delta x square. That is how you write the second order. So we are differentiating this function now for the second time. So three times four is twelve. Then I raise one, I get two. Plus two times three is six. I raise one, I get x. One times two is two. That's all. Next is that order differential. That order differential. That order differential. So in the that order differential, we are differentiating this function now for that time. So it will be delta cubed y over delta x cubed. So I will say two times uh, 12, that is 24x when I raise one. And this one, because of one, becomes six. That way. Fourth order. Fourth order differential. Fourth order differential. Fourth order differential. I'm going to have a uh, who? Delta is for four y out of x is for four. So this one becomes twenty four. 
And if you want to get the fifth order, which now will be zero, fifth order differential of this function. Fifth order, order differential to delta phi y, delta x raised to power phi, that becomes zero. So again, your syllabus will not require all these. Eh? This one, we do them in pure mathematics or when we are in operations research. And there are methods we use to test whether these are maxima or minima points. But your syllabus is very simple. It only requires you to stop here. So we will not get to the second, but at least I have to mention so that when you hear people talk of H of these, you don't think is on the head of department, but there are other things in mathematics known as each of these. So that brings us to the end of our today's lesson. Uh, we shall continue from there, God willing, on task. Thank you. So this coming Saturday, we will not have a class. We just do the last one.